What is going on, Brick Squad? Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Mind. This is the video series in which I invite you guys to comment down below some questions or topics for discussion. And of course, if you guys want to go ahead and be featured in next week's video, all you have to do is do two things. Number one, smash the like button down below in the video. And of course, number two, go ahead and be subscribed. Now, last week's episode was super fun. I had some friends here with me answering questions. If you guys haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link down below in the description for those of you who do want to go ahead and watch that. But this week, we are back to our normally regularly scheduled Q&A series. And of course, we are going to go ahead and start off. Now, before we go ahead and continue, I do want to say if I don't answer your question, um, I do want you to re-comment it on the most recent video. What I do is I go back to, um, so for example, this week's episode four, what I will do for this week is I'll go back to episode three and not necessarily one or two just because of my time constraints. So I do ask you guys, if I did not get to your question, go ahead and comment it again on this week's, the most recent video. And then that'll obviously increase your odds of getting into the next one. Today, we have a really awesome question to start us off here. We have Ben. Ben Andrusik, hopefully I pronounced that right. Hey Brickwiz, nice vid. My question is, what do you think the next Star Wars trilogy should be? There are rumors of an Old Republic trilogy, and I personally think that would be really cool. What do you think? Well, anyways, thank you for your question. I really appreciate it, and that's a great question, honestly. One of the biggest things for me is that I've been waiting for the Skywalker trilogy to kind of end. I know that kind of sounds a little cynical. Obviously, the Skywalker saga in Star Wars is made up of three trilogies, one of them which, which is currently being produced. Um, but I've been really waiting for us to move on. I think as Star Wars fans, I think we need something really, really new. You know, we've gotten like hints of new movies with different types of risks, like, like The Last Jedi, Rogue One, Solo. But I think what we really need as a fan base is for us to move past the whole Imperial, First Order, Luke Skywalker saga, the Skywalker family saga. So... Do I think that they should make a new trilogy? Obviously, yes. And what do I think it should be? I agree. I think it should be Old Republic. Coming from a purely Star Wars uh, fan standpoint, seeing the Old Republic, seeing the height of the Jedi and the Sith and the wars between the two would be super cool. Getting to meet new characters and obviously getting to finally see some really famous ones on screen like Plagueis. Um, we could see how Palpatine kind of rose to power. Maybe even that would be really cool. Maybe even get his own standalone film. But I think seeing the Old Republic wars, the battles between the legendary Sith and the Jedi, would be really cool. You know, all we see in the prequels is just kind of like the Jedi at their low point, right? We see them losing grasp on themselves, the Senate, obviously people like Anakin are realizing the, the faults within the Jedi system. So I think that seeing the old Republic, seeing the way the Jedi were formed, how they were at their peak would be super, super cool. Now, a while back, I did hear the rumor that the Game of Thrones writers um, were actually doing a Star Wars trilogy about the old Republic. I'm not sure how true that rumor is or if it's confirmed. If it is confirmed, let me know down below because I, I don't know. Um, but that would be primary for me. I'm a, I love Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is probably my favorite TV show of all time. And Game of Thrones is definitely for mature audiences, right? For those of you who have watched it or who have heard of it, there's definitely some gory scenes. There's definitely mature M-rated scenes. But I think that would translate perfectly to an Old Republic style trilogy, right? The Old Republic is supposed to be dirty, grimy, not necessarily like the prequels and all this like happiness on Naboo and all that kind of stuff. It would be really dark, cynical planets and battles, which I think the creators of Game of Thrones would be able to perfectly hammer out. So I would really like for the new trilogy to be based on the Old Republic. I don't think it would be smart to go into the future past the Skywalker saga, like for them to backtrack a little bit and go further back into history so we can see more of how everything we knew from the trilogies came to be. Great question, I like that question. This question comes from Ace Gamer Studio, someone who's actually been on my channel for quite some time since my very beginning, so shout out. Would you think LEGO will do Fortnite sets since LEGO did Overwatch sets? Now, I was personally very surprised lego did overwatch you know there are very blatant you know guns in overwatch now, the rule kind of surrounding lego doing themes with violence is is kind of like a blurred line i mean we have star wars which there is you know there's in in a, in a simple sense there's mass genocide in star wars there's murder all that stuff um but then again lego says no we're not going to be doing these violent themes um and i think it's because mainly they don't want to replicate like actual real life stuff. However, in Overwatch, in the game, there are weapons that are like in real life. So for that reason, um, I don't think LEGO will be doing Fortnite sets. The weapons used in Fortnite are do exist in real life, like blatantly. Like in Overwatch, we have big mechs, we have superpowers, which is set in like a fantasy realm. But then in Fortnite, you know, obviously, yes, the bust and the magic shield is kind of like weird to us. But other than that, 
the concept is pretty it's, it's grounded in reality for you know a, a good a good majority of it i think that because fortnite has weapons like the scar the m16 um the barrett 50 cal i don't think lego will be recreating fortnite and i also think a big reason is because i'm sure someone else has the license already to making fortnite stuff so unfortunately i don't see that happening however i do really want them to do it for two reasons number one i would love a fortnite lego set i think that'd be super cool getting minifigures getting all like the cool avatars from fortnite but also for another standpoint is that lego would make so much money they would become so popular if you think about it lego's primary audience obviously other than a falls um is definitely going to be like in that range of 9 10 11 12 year olds and fortnite's age range is exactly that that's their primary audience and especially audiences for people like ninja uh tifu um, scissors, a whole bunch of other people who stream. There's a lot of younger audience kids, and especially if Lego reached out to Ninja and like did a Lego collab or something where he built sets and streamed it, or I don't even know, but anything like that would be super beneficial. Now, I do not think that it will happen, unfortunately. I really do hope it will, but my gut says it's probably not gonna happen. Now, the next question comes from Aiden Bove. He asks, what makes the prequels that bad? Revenge of the Sith is amazing, but that's about it. So, the prequels now. So, uh, so, so this is definitely going to be a topic for discussion for the remainder of the video. I'm going to be explaining a lot of my thoughts about the prequels, um, and I urge you guys to comment down below your thoughts as well. I know the prequels are very loved by a lot of people, and I'll definitely be more, um, even, even grounded if that makes sense. I won't be as biased towards me not liking the prequels, but here, here, here are the reasons why I think the prequels are not the greatest. Now, first off, it is really important to understand where I'm coming from. I don't think the prequels are complete trash. I know there are a lot of people who will advocate for that. I know there are a lot of people who say they're the greatest movies ever, and I kind of fall in between. I definitely think that the original trilogy and the sequels are really far superior to the prequels. Um, however, I don't think the prequels are honestly that that bad. I think they're not as bad as people would expect from me. Um, you guys know I don't really like the prequels too much, and I guess here's the reasons why. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, number one, I think the most important thing to me now as I'm older is script and, and just the acting is just really subpar. You know, when I was younger, I would love to watch, you know, the giant battles of Coruscant and Kashyyyk, clones and droids battling, and I think that's definitely something that's gonna like really kind of boost it up for me. You know, when I was younger, I'd watch the crap out of those movies. When I was into Star Wars before I am now, I would always buy those Clone Wars sets. So I think one of the big things for me that keeps it going for me is like the sort of nostalgia. However, you have to re recognize that you can't use nostalgia as an excuse to think a movie is great. So the biggest thing for me now that I'm older and I realize a lot of things wrong with movies, and I just kind of, as I grow older, it's it's gotta be for me the acting and then the writing. And I don't know really who's to blame for that. Um, I think that honestly, in my opinion, Hayden Christensen gets way too much hate. I honestly think that if George Lucas wasn't as persistent as he was of having Anakin be this whiny ass baby, I think Hayden Christensen could have been a really good mature Anakin. And I get that that's the point, right? We're supposed to see Anakin Skywalker be this immature person who's very impressionable and I get that and that's one of the things that kind of keep me going back and forth between whether I think some things are bad or not but I really do think that Hayden Christensen is actually a phenomenal actor so stop it I have my dog here I apologize now I lost my train of thought. Thanks a lot, Sophie. Where was I? Okay, so the prequels. Um, Yeah, so I think that the script is really bad. I think the acting and the way that it's portrayed as these characters are, are pretty bad. Another thing that really, really bugged me about the prequels was the goofiness, right? I mean, yes, Star Wars is supposed to be this fantasy and uh, obviously lasers and Death Stars and all this kind of stuff is not really we can't grasp the idea of it. And this is why it's a fantasy, right? I th at least I think it's a fantasy or a sci-fi or one of those. But one of the things that absolutely bugs me about the prequels is the, the mushy stuff. Um, and something that reminded me of the prequels when I watched The Last Jedi was Canto Bite and that whole scene of them running on this animal, you know, through like giant areas and buildings and it just kind of felt like stupid stuff to me. And I do hate to say that, you know, and that's nothing against, um, you know, oh, I forget her names, but you know, like Finn and Rose Tico and their actors or actresses. One of the biggest things about the prequels that I do not like is the mushy stuff. For example, in episode two, The Clone Wars, there was so much unnecessary and uncomfortable love scenes between Anakin and Padme. And whether, again, you can argue whether that's intentional, whether it's to make the audience be like, ugh, and like cringe. But one of the things to me that I absolutely hated about that movie was the really stupid love scenes, like the one where Anakin's in the grass and he's playing dead and then Padme thinks he's dead and then she hops on top of him and then they all laugh. It's like, that's not how stuff like that works. And I think that if maybe they grounded their relationship a little bit more in reality, I think it would have been much more believable and much more enjoyable. I also think that everything happened way too fast. Now also, now also one of the worst things for me as a Star Wars fan, I'm, I'm actually genuinely laughing right now, 
Anakin literally in episode two, right? So episode one, we leave him. He's a kid. Episode two, he is a more mature. I uh, mature is not really right, the right word to use in the sense, but he's a he's still a kid in my opinion. But he has the body of an adult. And when he see when he sees Padme, he's just like infatuated with love. And the dude hasn't seen her for like a decade or something like that. And it's just, like, that's just one of the most unbelievable things, in my opinion. It's just that he sees the senator or queen or whatever she is, and then he just immediately falls in love with her. And he says all these stupid, creepy lines, like, watching her at night. And then when she asks him to not look at him, he's like, why? Or something like that. And it's just like, bro, that's not how it works. You can't do that. So I think that when it comes to the prequels, the biggest thing for me is just stuff like that. Now, before we go ahead and move on, I do want to say some good things about the prequels, right? I told you that I'd be unbiased or at least unbiased as possible. So I think one of the greatest things to come from the prequels is definitely the Clone Wars in general, not necessarily episode two. In fact, I think is the worst prequel movie, but the Clone Wars themselves, the progression of seeing the battles between the clones and the separatists on Geonosis, on Kashyyyk. And then, and then my favorite scene of all time from the prequels is going to be the 501st um, marching up the stairs of the Jedi Temple with Anakin Skywalker. I think that's a really cool scene. And that actually brings me to another point is that the whole is that the sequence of events when the clone troopers are turning on um, their Jedi after Palpatine executes Order 66 I didn't really feel anything you know we barely see these Jedi being killed but yet the movie wants us to feel sorry for them and I, 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 I kind of get it like obviously it sucks to be turned on by these clones the troopers that you have been to battle with but also another unbelievable thing in my opinion is the fact that these highly skilled trained Jedi can't sense that these guys behind them are pointing their guns at them and then let alone defend them themselves like I think there's a couple of scenes where and then there's like the Jedi and then behind him are the clone troopers and then there's just like a dull of battle and then you see you see all these clones like just take their time aiming at the Jedi and they can't sense it you know it's one of those things that's kind of like an incontinuity in my opinion like the Jedi can sense everything Yoda can sense you know that there's someone evil close but he can't sense who it is like I get that but the fact that all these highly trained highly skilled Jedi can be roasted like that by some clones is really unbelievable in my opinion but again back to the good things the good things about the prequels in my opinion was the 501st marching on the jedi temple especially the coruscant scene in revenge of the sith was awesome to see but that's kind of why the prequels were bad and i think i'm talking a lot about this this might be a topic for today's video but also i do want for those of you who have stayed throughout this video comment down below what you think of the prequels um i'm honestly really interested to see what you guys have i've had so many thoughts of putting a podcast or like a talk show together where i just have these other youtubers on and we talk explicitly star wars but yeah when it comes to the prequels there's just a lot of stuff that they could have done better and obviously hindsight is 2020 right you can't really it's really unfair to judge something after it's done which i completely understand where i and i do sincerely you know understand that point not sure how we're doing on time here i think we'll have time for one or two more questions here this next one comes from rusty bricks do you have any tips for expanding one's part collection or how to build a mock on a budget so two questions um expanding one's parts collection um, definitely parting out sets from Walmart, Target, where you find these sets on clearance for 30, 40, 50, 60% off. For example, I got the Ninjago Green Mech Dragon for like 60% off. I'm going to part that out eventually. Um, and then obviously, you know, getting a job, um, spending money on BrickLink, it's probably going to be the second best way to expand your parts collection. And building on a budget, there really is no tip other than just build with what you have. You know, decide you want to build something, but then take into account your existing part collection. That's pretty much it. There's no like secret formula to magically expand your collection like that. It's just you have to work with what you have. When I initially started my channel building mocks and just kind of my own personal hobby, really before my YouTube kind of started to get the snowball effect, um, I think that I just had to do, I just had to build with what I I had and you can clearly see that too if you look at my first two mocks compared to crate and now kessel light years better light years better so you just have to build with what you have there is no magic formula that'll give you an amazing part collection just kind of you have to make compromises and the last question for today comes from captain lego star wars what is your favorite vehicle of each star wars faction so you got rebels resistance first order imperial so four so Imperial Star Destroyer, 100%. You guys know that that is my most wanted set of all time. Star Destroyer is absolutely badass. Uh, First Order, ATM-6, menacing gorilla walkers, just gigantic. I wish I could build Rich Boy J's and Minifig Scale. I will eventually, when I move out and I get my own place, I will build, I will build that thing Minifig Scale. Um, what's next? So Resistance, there's no really Resistance like, you know, 
vehicle i mean i guess the coolest thing in my opinion would probably be um i think the coolest thing for me would be the flagship from the last jedi the one that holdo um you know rams the the supremacy and the first order fleet with the light speed i think the ships beside that were like the nebulon b or like a updated version of the nebulon b so i would probably say that or maybe the resistance transport pod that they take to create that's probably a, a nice like alternative and then the rebel faction i have to say the x-wing i think the x-wing is one of the most if not the most iconic starfighters from star wars and one that'll definitely uh uh, hold a special place for me because it's so cool you know lock lock those s foils baby so guys that's gonna wrap up this week's episode of matt's mind hope you all enjoyed obviously i did not get to as many questions because we had a really good topic discussion or at least uh me venting to you guys obviously comment down below what you guys are thinking i want these videos to be very involved with you guys i want to really get to know a lot of you more so go ahead and comment your thoughts down below and like i said if i did not answer your question yet comment it on this video comment it on the recent matt's mind those are the videos in the comment section that i look at to uh really filter out some questions for the upcoming weeks so guys that's gonna wrap it up hope you all enjoyed this week's episode of matt's mind stay tuned for a should you buy coming out on friday and as well as a kessel hall video coming out tomorrow and then obviously kessel will be making a awesome return this saturday as usual thank you all so much for watching seriously thank you guys for all your support and i'll see you later peace